how I figured out how to achieve big goals by letting go. Here's my goal setting transformation where I share how I went from being a goal setting failure to consistently achieving goals and loving the process. How I figured out how to achieve goals. Now I've got to admit that goal setting used to really confuse me. I knew I'd had massive success achieving certain goals in my 10 years of online business. But on the other hand, I also had a lot of blockages. For a long time, I had absolutely no idea how I'd managed to achieve certain goals. I didn't have a particular strategy that I could apply to achieve all of the goals I'd set for my business. I read all of the books on goal setting and bought many courses and did everything they told me to do. Yet most of the goals I set didn't happen and I was tearing my hair out. I ended up giving up on goal setting for many, many years. It was just too painful to be constantly disappointed at the end of every month. I continued to work hard year after year, implementing different strategies I was learning, but month after month, my business was in constant decline. Now, many years later, I feel like I finally mastered the art of goal setting and goal achievement and the contents of my Stamp Goals book have been placed on my heart in the hope that it will help give you as much success as it's given me. My aim is to help remove the awful disappointment from your own life so you can continue to work on growing your business. So what's your goals story? How do you feel about setting goals for your business? Do you love the process and look forward to smashing your goals? Or do you avoid thinking about setting goals at all costs? Let me know what you're struggling with by leaving me a comment on my blog, on my YouTube channel, or send me a DM on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle. And today I'm hoping you are going to be inspired by my journey to want to start setting your own goals in your own business. My name is Kath Kyle and I'm the author of Stamp Goals book and I'm so happy that you're here. I help content creators and change makers manifest business success through spirituality, self-belief and strategy and I help you master your marketing, manifestation and money mindset. So here is my goal setting story. This is an excerpt from my book Stamp Goals which is now available on Amazon. Stamp Goals will help you put your stamp on the world in 30 days and set goals that you will actually achieve. So here's my story, why I started a business. So the plan was for me to be at home raising my kids. I gave up my teaching job when we moved to a new area in Scotland and I didn't want to go back to teaching. As soon as I had my first baby, I started my first business. Although I loved spending time with my baby girl, I needed a challenge for my mind. I needed to feel like I was achieving something and giving something back to the world. Plus, we were really stretched financially living in a very tiny house and we saved every spare penny so that we could go and visit our families who didn't live anywhere near us. And we had no money for any luxuries at all. I just wanted to be able to provide for my family in the same way that my husband provided for us. I was yearning for more money to enable us to have more fun, go out to restaurants and give our kids a little bit more. And I also really wanted to be a good role model for our kids, show them what is possible in life by building something purposeful that can really help people. My first few businesses were a massive success. In fact, I still have them up and running today. And although I am not active in them, they are now almost completely passive. My first business was a healthy food blog that I started after having my first baby. I just needed a way to engage my brain again. So I started a new business called Green Thickies. I had invented a new recipe formula which was a filling green smoothie for weight loss. And I called my new invention a Green Thickie. 
I had easily lost 56 pounds by drinking green thickies and I knew it could help so many people in the same way. I was so excited to share this with as many people as I could and I always planned for it to be a business that would make money. I set my goals and I read them out loud twice a day for over six months and I had so much fun working on my blog that it never felt like hard work. I was so grateful when the money started to trickle in and very soon a flood of money was poured into this business and I was earning a six figure revenue within about six to nine months of starting the business. Then I got pregnant for a second time and had some health challenges during my second pregnancy. I was finding it a struggle to just do the essentials every day so I stopped working on my blog for most of my pregnancy. During this time I was amazed to see my traffic and revenue rising and rising and I continued to be so grateful for this and I started work on my business again as soon as I was able to. And I felt like the first few years of this business went amazingly well because I was in perfect alignment with my purpose and had a very positive attitude towards my business and life and everything felt so easy and success came effortlessly and the only goals that I really set were very long-term goals to earn a very large amount of money in 10 years. I felt like this kept me thinking big about my business but at the same time it stopped me from feeling any immediate pressure and I did set tasks for me to do on a month-to-month -month basis but I never really called them goals. I am the kind of person who often gets stressed under pressure of immediate deadlines and I'm very self-motivated to take constant action. I am that annoying person who would begin a college essay straight away and have it finished well before the deadline. That way I always maintained an attitude of success and feeling like I was on top of my workload which helped me achieve more. So this type of long-term goal setting worked really well for me. However, knowing what I know now about goal setting, I have now mastered the art of setting short-term and long-term goals. This is because I have learned how to detach myself from the goals and avoid disappointment, which keeps me in a state of happiness and success and makes it much more likely that I will achieve my short-term goals. A few years later, I started a new business working for a network marketing company selling essential oils. And this isn't something that I ever planned to do, but these oils had such a positive effect on my mental and physical health that I couldn't help but share them with other people. The essential oils company had an incentive to earn money, gifts and a place for yourself and your partner on a cruise if you met certain sales targets within six months. And I decided that I was going to go for this goal. I was in such a positive place after the success of my first business, which I was still running, that I felt on top of the world. I could achieve anything. Most people had a very hard time achieving this goal in just six months, so I knew that they had set the bar high. And as soon as I started working towards this goal, they announced that they were taking this incentive away completely in just four months in my country. And I now only had four months to achieve the goal, not six months as I originally thought. But I didn't let this discourage me. I stayed true to my goal and changed the date to four months time. I noticed my mindset changing from the mindset I used in my first business where everything was always relaxed and easy to a different mindset. I knew that I'd have to push myself way out of my comfort zone to achieve this goal. I'm a natural introvert, which is why I'm writing, I'm blogging and creating videos suits me down to the ground but I actually had to sell to people by talking to them for this task. So I pushed myself way out of my comfort zone and adopted the attitude of helping as many people as I possibly could by talking to them on the phone. And I was never pushy, but I did feel a lot of discomfort during this task. And I was over the moon to reach my goal in just under four months and earned 
all of the prizes and that Mediterranean cruise was the best vacation that me and my husband had ever had in our lives and we've definitely got the cruise bug now. And after that my husband got a big promotion in a new area and we moved into a luxury house twice the size of our previous house in a prestigious housing estate. Between the two of us we had more money than we ever thought possible and we started to splash the cash. We had upgraded our house, got a nicer, bigger car, hired a housekeeper, bought lovely new furniture and signed both of the kids up for a very expensive full-time outdoor forest nursery. We felt like we'd made it and achieved everything we'd always wanted. I was so happy that I reached my goal with the network marketing company that I wanted to continue to reach higher and higher levels in that company. So the next month I set myself a higher goal and for the first time ever I didn't hit it. I didn't give up and continued to set goals month after month for the next half a year and was so upset that I didn't hit any of them. And I finally realised that I simply didn't want to continue doing this type of work anymore. I was fed up with talking to people all day long and I wanted to get back to doing the work I loved again which was to create things. And that was the very first time that I didn't achieve a goal by a deadline and I didn't take it very well. I allowed it to cloud my thoughts, I judged myself and I lost my confidence in the process. And I didn't put two and two together at the time. I didn't realise that I just hadn't achieved my goals simply because I just didn't want to do this type of work anymore. I just labelled myself as a failure. And I saw a lot of my friends rising to success in this company very quickly and some of them even became millionaires in a very short space of time. And I wanted what they had and I didn't understand why I wasn't good enough. And this failure attitude permeated its way back to my first business, Green Thickies. And I went back to working on this blog and now with my new adoption of a failure attitude, things were never the same again for this business. I worked harder than I'd ever worked on my business, working 10 hour days, including weekends and adopting strategies that had worked for other people. Every few months, I'd try different strategies. I set up memberships, I ran webinars, I set up coaching programs, I set up drop shipping stores, I set up funnels, I created more products, I focused on increasing traffic, I hired a team of 10 people, I hired a coach, I ran paid ads, I wrote more books, I bought training after training, implementing everything I learned. And what happened was that I always received an initial boost of revenue from implementing a new strategy but some other parts of my business that had been working really well on autopilot suddenly dropped by exactly the same amount that the new strategy had increased by and this meant that my revenue stayed the same month after month despite more and more investment in time and training and this pattern carried on for years. During this time I also became more and more miserable with my life. We were living in a very cold climate and I felt like I couldn't get outdoors as much as I wanted to. My main goal was to move to a warmer climate. I thought that that was the only thing that could make me happy. I constantly moaned about how bad the weather was and my main goal was to earn enough money to support my whole family so we could move to a sunnier, warmer shore. Funnily enough, what I should have realised right from the start was that my husband didn't want to be supported solely by my earnings. I had earned enough money to support my family on my own and I always felt like I needed to earn more. However, my husband enjoyed his job and was living his purpose. I felt constantly trapped. I kept thinking, if I earn a million dollars, maybe he'll think that that's enough money to quit his job for. The more I focused on this goal of moving house and earning more and more money, the more desperate and miserable I felt and the further away the goal got from me. I got so fed up with setting new revenue goals that I never achieved that I finally gave up setting targets completely. I just assumed that goal setting didn't work for me and there was no point in writing down these goals as I never achieved any of them. 
Eventually, during a very stressful launch where I committed to more work than I could physically handle, I had a complete burnout and ended up with adrenal fatigue and chronic fatigue syndrome. I basically couldn't move for around six months and physically had to stop working on my business. A funny thing happened during this time of illness. I mentally let go of my business and the striving that came with it. I just felt a deep sense of trust that everything would be okay. And what happened next was unbelievable. My revenue actually went up when I stopped working on my business completely. This was the second time that this happened and it should have been a lesson to me about having faith and letting go of the attachment to my goals. But I still didn't put two and two together. To me, it was a bit like a slap in the face. I worked so hard for years on my business and never managed to increase my revenue. But the second I stopped working, my revenue went up in a big way. I actually took a little tantrum with my business and mentally said to it, right, you obviously think that you can run much better without me, so I give up on you now. You're on your own and I no longer give my time and attention to you. And at that point, I made my business passive. Eventually, I recovered and dabbled in setting up different businesses that never took off. Then I started feeling desperate about money again and ended up going back to Green Thickies again. By now, Green Thickies had been labelled in my mind as a failure and something that I could never really figure out. My mindset around this business was still in a bad place and I started to notice a decline in revenue every month. Every single month, without fail, my revenue decreased. Every month I had to go through a cost cutting exercise. I had to let almost all of my team members go. I was constantly in a state of fear because I worried I wasn't going to be able to pay my expenses both in my business and at home. After I reduced my business expenses as low as I could, we then went to work reducing our personal expenses as my reduced salary could no longer afford to pay them. We sold our car, The kids were now in school so we didn't have nursery places to pay for but we took them out of the after school club to save even more money. We let our housekeeper go and stopped going on expensive vacations and instead started planning budget breaks locally. It was all so depressing and I felt like a constant failure. I got to the point where I had to decide whether to wrap up the business completely as it was no longer viable. My expenses were higher than my revenue. I knew it was make or break time. If my businesses didn't pick up, I'd have to go and get a job. And in my heart, I knew I was destined to be an entrepreneur. I just had to make this work. And I remembered that I'd had a lot of success previously. And I knew there had to be an answer out there somewhere or inside of me somewhere. So I started to read a lot of books about mindset, goal setting, spirituality, the law of attraction and manifestation. And I realized how my change in attitude had affected the success of my business in such a big way. I realized that working hard never guaranteed success and it was your mindset that primarily determined whether you succeeded or failed and no amount of hard work was ever going to make up for my lack of faith in my own goals. And I also realized that I'd stopped being grateful for my business. When I first started my business, I was always in a constant state of gratitude because every extra penny we earned made a massive difference to the quality of our lives. But when we moved into a more expensive house and our expenses shot through the roof, I developed a fearful attitude where I felt constant pressure to earn the money and I was terrified of losing it all. And when you feel such intense fear, often the thing that you are fearing is exactly what happens. And I learned how important gratitude is by reading many books on the subject. I had no idea what an impact my attitude was making on my business success. I also made a very important decision that I was going to be completely content and happy with my life right now. I totally let go of striving to move to a new area. I let go of the need for my business to earn more and more money. I focused on the things that mattered to me, which were my family and spending more time having fun with them. 
and i've got to admit that it wasn't always easy but i made a massive shift in my mind to keep choosing happiness in the present in the here and now i let go of waiting for happiness in the future i chose happiness despite being cold and found other things to give me happiness like going to the gym with my husband and playing board games with my kids i chose to be grateful for my entire life exactly as it was right now another piece of the puzzle was that i had been trying to work on a business that i was no longer passionate about my passion for my health business had decreased a long time ago and I still continued to hustle and overwork on this business. I believed that because it was still making revenue, it would be stupid to give up working on it. I now realize how important it is to follow your purpose in life. It used to be my purpose to help people to improve their health, but a few years later, my passion shifted to helping entrepreneurs to improve their businesses. I didn't follow my purpose and what resulted was doors continuing to shut. I still didn't listen and ruined my health in the process. I still let fear stop me from branching out with my new passion. I felt like I needed to prove myself with another successful business before I helped other people with their businesses. I just needed to prove to myself that I really did have what it took before I gave myself the credibility in the business niche. So I set up a new blog from scratch in the health and beauty niche and created a series of blog posts. And after a while, this blog started earning me some good passive income. So my confidence increased and I finally felt ready to start helping entrepreneurs. At this point, I set up another new business and website, kathkyle.com, in my own name. I now focus on helping business owners to improve their mindset so that they can achieve their business goals. My Stamp Goals book is my first purpose-led project and I have the same passion for this business as I did for my health business almost 10 years ago. As soon as I figured out my purpose and started working on this new business, we got the exciting news that my husband had a new job in another new area. I was over the moon about the move because it meant that I was closer to my family and the climate was a lot warmer. We were also moving right next to the beach, which is something I had set as a goal for years and it was finally happening. I was finally living the dream. And I couldn't believe that it happened so easily once I got my mindset in a better place. It had taken me about five years to come to this realization. The move to a warmer climate happened not because of my own striving, but because I let go of my striving and chose happiness. For the next three months, selling the house became a constant full-time job as we decluttered and fixed up the house. Then I spent every day cleaning the house and making it look like a show home for the daily viewings. So I had to put my new business on the back burner for a while until we moved house. For the first time in a decade, I didn't feel pressure to be working and, and felt much more trusting that life was happening for us. I felt like delays working on my new business were beneficial as we were living our dream. And it turned out the delays were beneficial for writing this book as I spent that time cleaning the house, listening to audiobooks and learning everything I could about goal setting, doing research for this book, which allowed new ideas to flow into me that I could base this book on. When you take a rest from your business and just trust, you'll be amazed how ideas pour into you. You have to give yourself space and time to truly get inspired. And during this time, I started to experiment with my mindset, working on setting goals for my finances on a personal level. Money and blessings started pouring into a personal life in a big way, and I really got my head in the right place. I now fully understand what it means to set goals and how to lose attachment to my goals so I never let myself get paralysed by disappointment just because I didn't hit my goals. When I do that, I notice that I have way more success and achieve more of my goals than I've ever done. I rekindled my passion for goal setting. During my journey, I've always wondered why I went through such a long period of effortlessly reaching my goals and why I went on to struggle with goals for such a long time.
and now I understand that if I hadn't struggled with goals, I'd never have been able to relate to other people who struggle with goals. If I didn't have to overcome my own struggles, I wouldn't know how to do it. So all of my struggles make sense now. It was all part of my purpose. I finally feel like I have goals figured out and I knew that it was time to write a book sharing everything I've learned with you. I know this book is my purpose as it was one of the easiest things I've ever done. It flowed out of me in just one hour a day in exactly one month and that's how you know you're living your purpose when everything feels like it's flowing so effortlessly. I know I'm following my purpose as I wake up excited to start work on my business. Things just flow easily to me and I'm so grateful to be doing something that I love. Success also follows with the same level of ease and I have a great sense of trust and confidence that I'm doing everything exactly as I'm supposed to. Now that I've ad adopted my new attitude, all four of my businesses have been increasing for the first time in many years and I'm not even working on three of them. They are almost completely passive and I'm so grateful for this income which I can rely on while I build up my new business. I'm now able to spend less time working, more time with family at the beach and I'm so grateful every day that this is my life and this is what I want for you too. My Stamp Goals book is going to help you step into your purpose, figure out exactly the right goals for you and achieve your deepest desires for your business. I'll show you how to put your stamp on the world. Are you ready? Let's take the next step so now that you have heard how i transformed my relationship with goals so i could set goals i actually achieve and enjoy focusing on my purpose you might be wondering how you can do the same i break down everything you need to know about setting goals you actually achieve into 30 daily steps in my stamp goals book to get hold of my book, you can click the link surrounding this content or you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash stamp goals and there you can read more about it and the fabulous bonuses that I'm giving to anyone who purchases my book and get the link to both my Kindle and paperback books on Amazon. Now that you've heard my own story about how I figured out where I'd been going wrong with goal setting, would you also like to figure out where you've been going wrong with goal setting with your own business? This is what I'm going to be sharing next time. So make sure you subscribe to my podcast, Manifest Business Success, my YouTube channel, Kath Kyle, and follow me on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle so you don't miss that. While you're waiting for your copy of Stamp Goals book to arrive, you can start taking practical action in your business today. Go and watch my free business goal setting workshop for fast results where I show you exactly how to set three essential goals that will get you results within one month. Boost your confidence, feel like a winner and attract more success to you by achieving your goals every time. This free workshop and associated workbook is part of my book bonus bundle for stamp goals and I'm only making this workshop and workbook free for a limited time so go and grab that while it's still available and you can click on the link surrounding this content or you can go to kathkyle.com goals workshop to get that and you are going to be so glad that you did. Now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.